Hey there, this is your friend at BGBM. And uh, as uh, most of you might be familiar, uh, those who are regular viewers of our channel, uh, I am the technical lead of our company, Panic Labs Private Limited. And uh, I thought of just uh, why not to make a video uh, that will give you more clarity about uh, the hot training solution that Cisco has been selling under its banner, which is called as Cisco's SD band solution. So there are lots and lots of requests that we that we get uh, from our clients where where they are seeking for more clarity on why do they need to upgrade from traditional WAN networks to uh, software defined WAN networks. So I just thought of creating another video since one of my previous video, which I which I uploaded about uh, why people need to go with network automation as it's in a pretty booming state right now. So I thought of let's let's create another video that will give more clarity on his demand as well. So let's get started with that. If you enjoyed the content of the video, don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to our channel. All right. So three things that we're discussing. One. It's uh, about uh, why do we need to switch from traditional network to uh, SD-WAN network, the, the reasons for that. Second, we uh, are going to talk about the opportunities that are there in the market when uh, an individual is upgrading from or upgrading their skills into uh, SD-WAN. And third is how do we cater these services when, when it comes to delivering training or getting training from Pinnacle Labs Prime Clinic. So, Talking about the very first thing, if, if you are familiar about the traditional WAN networks, then there are lots and lots of uh, companies which actually uh, create or uh, manufacture networking devices, be it routers, be it switches, be it firewalls, be it uh, IDS, IPS, load balancers, and so many other devices that are there. But when it comes to configuring them, and then these devices are, uh, you can say, manufactured by uh, various other vendors as well, be it Juniper, Palo Alto, uh, Cisco, uh, well, how can we forget that? So Cisco, Juniper, and uh, various other vendors, CNA, Huawei, Nokia, and whatnot. So all of these vendors do offer some or the other way that you can use in order to uh, access the device, right? Be it uh, CLI is, is the most common way that, that you generally access your, we can say, device, right? And uh, then there are some other ways uh, that you can access the device as well by using either GUI. Uh, if you talk about some of the Cisco devices, be ASA, right? ASA can be managed fully by using its GUI controller, which is called an ASDM application security device manager. So by using that ASDM, you can fully configure that uh, firewall, uh, and you don't you don't need to touch the CLI configuration at all, right? Because it's hard to remember so many commands for all the time. So GUI is kind of a common way now that's becoming popular in order to provision the devices or access the devices and, and deploy the configurations on them. So while we talk about these devices, you can say that in the large deployments, there are lots and lots of devices that gets deployed over, over different geographical locations. Okay, you, you can say that some of your site is, is deployed on maybe uh, London, there's another site that is deployed in Dubai, there's another site in the US, and there is a headquarter which actually stores uh, or which actually acts as the central point where all the business applications are situated. So these sites that we talk about, be it London, Dubai, and, and various other sites, there are lots of employees that works in those sites. And these employees require uh, to access the business applications that are posted into, uh, you can say, the, the headquarter. We, it, it can be CRM, customer relationship management applications, it can be ERP solutions, it can be mail servers, it can be HTTP servers, file servers, and various other type of applications that, that daily uh, requires to be accessed by the employees that are sitting in different geographical locations of the company, right? But <clears throat> when you try to deploy such solution or when you try to create some uh, infrastructure that actually supports this requirement, then there are lots of provisioning that needs to be done. Maybe uh, you have like all the managed routers that are, that are situated into different sites and these edge routers are connected with traditional LAN network behind them. Right, that, that can be, and there, there are lots of configurations as well that, that you need to do. Suppose, for example, when you talk about that, then you, you have to configure, for example, uh, OSPR, EIGRP, BGP, and, and various other WAN manager routers. So, one thing is you need to do manual configurations of that, which is pretty slow and, and, and static. And when you look at that, then in that case, you need to configure OSPR, PIGRP, BGP, such type of configuration on device-by-device -device basis, which, which kind of creates complexity. 
right? So that that is like kind of a limitation that you are facing in your traditional network because the control plane is locally available onto every 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 single device, and in that case. When you when you compare it with the software defined approach, when you compare it with SD WAN approach, then you get the ability to move from that kind of architecture into the uh, like all the way cutting edge technology full architecture, which is, which gives you the ability to centralizely manage your entire WAN infrastructure. So all your London, Dubai, US, and headquarters sites can be managed just from a single single pane of glass, just from a centralized controller which is offered into Cisco's sd solution with the name of vManage. So this vManage plays the role of GUI, Graphical User Interface. And using that particular controller, you can manage all of your assignments across all the devices in a very great, uh, great way possible. Right, that, that's one thing. Another thing when you talk about that is you can save lots of money while giving up or while transitioning or instead of purchasing private circuits, from ISPs in order to get the dedicated uh, benefits, be it security, be it uh, SLA uptime, be it, be it some of those things, right? For example, let's compare it with MPLS. So MPLS gives you the ability to, to use like our your private circuit in order to communicate from one side to another side. But you, you pay hefty or hefty amount of money to the ISP in exchange of that particular service, right? And there are not so many benefits that you get out of the money that you that you give for it. MPLS is is pretty costly solution because there there was no competitor to it. So they were kind of charging a hell of a lot of money from their customers in order to offer those services. But when SD-WAN came out, SD-WAN offers you the same level of security, the same level of, uh, you can say, services as compared to the private circuits. You you can use the uh, public commodity internet in order to connect your two sites together. And still, those two sides can communicate together securely by using IPsec mechanisms, by using IPsec tunnels, right? And uh, it takes less less amount of time as compared to MPLS when when it comes to deploying a new site. For example, if you wanted to deploy a new site, um, like let's say in in USA or in in Dubai or in some, some other remote location, your company is coming up with a new site. So you need to notify your ISP three or four months before that before your site actually coming up so that they can physically send their network uh, engineers and uh, configure that new site for you okay that's that's quite uh, like you can see costly as well so in uh, in comparison to that when it comes to uh, sd man then it, it doesn't require such time of or such amount of time in order for you to be able to or in order for you to uh, deploy that particular new site it's it's done pretty easily Okay, it doesn't require you to give or dedicate that much amount of time. It can take a week for you to deploy that particular configuration and, and it's all done. It can take a, a few weeks of time for you and, and can be done pretty easily. So when it comes to deploying a new site, it can be done pretty easily over there. That's that's very strong benefit that you get. And apart from that, you can also uh, interface with your vManage. Uh, which basically gives you the ability to automate the decisions that can be taken by vManage in order to fully comply with the with the solution that you have, right? So that that gives you another automation or programmability ability to your uh, SD WAN solution. That's that's another reason. These are certain reasons which we basically talk about in our uh, training solutions or uh, training services when when we discuss about why do uh, client need to upgrade from traditional WAN to BSD WAN, but there are lots and lots of reasons that are, that are available. That's that's second point about talking about the uh, like reasons why why one needs to go from traditional network to SD WAN. Now talking about the opportunities that are there, then since every company is looking forward for people to upgrade, or every company is looking forward to bring in the uh, SD WAN solution. Be it of any weird vendor. I'm not specifically talking about Cisco. I'm talking about Citrix as well. I'm talking about F5 as well. Sorry, Fortnite as well. I'm talking about, uh, you can say, Versa's SD WAN solution as well at the ISP side. I'm talking about VMware's uh, SD WAN solution as well. There are a lot of, lot of vendors that are dealing into SD WAN now. So, be it any vendor, when you actually understand the core technology, be it, be it Cisco's SD WAN, be it, uh, you can say, VMware's SD WAN, the, the core technology remains the same, right? So when you look at that particular aspect, when you upgrade your skills into SD-WAN, you, you're going to get a chance to 
shine better in, in the organization that you're working for, right? So there is always opportunities open for uh, companies who are looking for people who deal into deploying SD-WAN and understanding how SD-WAN actually works. Yeah. <clears throat> so the third thing that I wanted to talk about in this video was uh, how do we cater these uh, trainings that we conduct for SD-WAN. So recently we, we uh, got pretty much feedback that people that we, we are dealing into Cisco's SD-WAN training since almost now six months, yeah. And uh, we have got pretty huge responses. We have delivered around uh, multiple batches and all of our batches have been houseful for now. So one limitation that we faced over there, how, how do we do cater those particular trainings is we divide that particular training into around three or four weeks of time. And every day, uh, the first week is dedicated for the theoretical aspects where we, we talk about the introduction to SD and software defined networking. And as the SD-WAN infrastructure or the SD-WAN solution is the children of the core SDN technology software defined networking. So we talk about the introduction to SD and then we go with uh, getting to know about the components of your SD-WAN uh, solution. Then we talk about how control plane and data plane operates with each other in conjunction with each other. And then uh, we, we move towards the onboarding of SD-WAN family in a lab environment. So the first week is completely dedicated for the theoretical sessions. Then we go ahead and start doing our labs. So when we talk about our trainings, we are pretty flexible with, with our labs because we create a custom topology that, that actually has multiple sites deployed and they all are connected with the controller side where we manage we want be smart, which are the controllers of the SD WAN fabric are, are connected together, right? And we connect all of these sites together by using multiple transports. So one of that will be assumed as public internet and the other one is going to be MPLS transport. So all the sites have dual transport connectivity there. And uh, yeah, you can see that particular thing on the screen as well. But yeah, and talking about the uh, extra benefits that you get, that we recently are coming up with unlimited lab access. So the labs that we have in-house, you can see the a little sample of data center behind me, that there are servers that are being hosted in our, uh, you can say, infrastructure, and they are right beside me. So I do work up with those servers in order to modify the uh, topology and, and see what we can add on onto, to the labs that we, that we do cater. But the training is conducted according to the official curriculum of, of Cisco's SD-WAN course. So one who is signing up for our course can directly go ahead and, and uh, can say attempt for the uh, official Cisco certification as well. Of course, by, by going through some of the self-study and practice sessions as well. But yeah, this is how we go further with the training as well. And since I uh, since we got so many requests from our uh, students who have been attending our training, that you should increase or we should increase the uh, lab time. So we are coming up with two months of unlimited lab access that uh, every single person who is enrolling in our trainings are, are going to get. So that's that's another benefit that you get. And apart from that, we, we do conduct our trainings generally in morning and evening time, uh, according to the Indian time zone. But uh, after the class, you get around unlimited lab access, right? So you, you get provided with the lab guides and all. And uh, generally candidates do the lab exercises after the class. So you, you get a 24-7 telegram support as well, where if, if you run into any problem or so, our team is right there to help you with be it like lab access issue, be it topology issue, be it uh, the lab guide issue that you're, that you're facing any challenges in order to do the lab and all. Our, our team is always there to help you on our private telegram channels that is only accessible by the, by the uh, candidates who sign up for our trainings and so on. And the channels are not destroyed after the training. They are like lifetime access channels. That's another thing that we come up with that. And the last thing is you get uh, lifetime recording accesses of the training that you're gonna attend, right? So we have a private portal uh, that uh, on which we basically track your progress of how you have been uh, like completing those training sessions, how you how frequently you have been watching that recordings and all. And according to that, you you yourself as well will be able to track uh, how dedicated you are in order to study the SD WAN solution. So. Yeah, that's, that's a couple of things that can uh, be out there. So, yeah, those were the things that we had to talk about in this particular video. I hope you enjoyed the content of the video and I gave you some bits and bytes of knowledge that might clear your idea or your uh, opinion about whether you should sign up for the SD WAN training or not. And if you feel uh, to clear your questions again, you can get, uh, you can just reach out to our team on www.findlabs.com or the number that might be shown down over here. 
and they will be happy to help you here. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoy the content and see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.